The gradient wipe effect is found under the transition category. I'll apply that to my layer, and this transition operates based on the luminance values of another layer. By default, it's going to choose the layer you apply it to as the gradient layer. So let's just turn up the transition completion and see what happens. If I go from zero to 100%, the image transitions into nothing, transparent pixels, but it's all based on all of the brightness values of the pixels of the layer. But since we can choose a different layer for the gradient layer, let's make a gradient to base the transition off of. I'm just gonna go up to layer, new solid, and I'll call this gradient map. Click okay, and then apply the ramp effect to this solid layer. So we have a linear gradient going from black to white. I can actually just turn this layer off. Don't need to see it, I just need to reference it under the gradient layer. So I'll choose gradient map as the source, and I'll make sure that this is set to effects and masks so that it actually looks at the effect that we applied to the gradient map. Now when I increase this transition completion, we just have a linear wipe. And let me explain why this is happening. Like I said before, this effect is taking the brightness values of the gradient layer to drive the transition. So the darkest pixels become transparent first. And as I increase this completion slider, brighter and brighter pixels also become transparent. Since our gradient is black at the top and white at the bottom, that's the direction the transition is going to advance in. If I change my gradient at all, it will update the shape of the gradient wipe effect. So if I just make a different looking transition like this, then my gradient wipe effect is going to wipe it at that angle, and it's going to get cut off right at this point because that's where I put my gradient ramp start color, the black value. So I can move this around freely, even though the layer is off to see how it's affecting the gradient wipe. Now what happens if I change my ramp shape from linear to radial? This is what my gradient looks like now. So black is in the middle and white is in the corner. Let's just align that a little bit more closely and I'll shut that off again. And then again, I'll increase that transition completion. Now we're getting basically an iris wipe. So these regular gradients don't do much for a gradient wipe. We could increase the transition softness and now we have pixels that are semi-transparent, not just fully transparent or fully opaque. So we get a softer wipe. But if we did something a little bit more complex on this gradient, instead of just a linear or radial gradient, I'll add a turbulent noise effect that'll generate this more random pattern, and then again, shut the layer off. Our gradient wipe is now going to have a lot more texture to it. And your gradient layer can be absolutely anything. It could be another photo, it could be an animated texture, a video clip, whatever you want, and it's always going to base the opacity of this transition on the brightness values of the pixels. Now let's look at the rest of the controls. We have gradient placement, which is set to stretch gradient to fit, but we have a couple other options. And to show you what these do exactly, I'm going to change the size of this solid by going up to layer, solid settings, and I'm just going to make it say 500 by 500 pixels and click okay. So now my texture is a much smaller square than my comp. And if I turn this off, the texture is actually being stretched to fit the comp. So it's exactly the same as if I were to just stretch this layer to fill the comp like that. That's exactly what the effect is doing when this is set to stretch gradient to fit. We could change this to center gradient, and then it's only going to appear right in the center of the comp, the exact same size, no stretching. But that does make a lot of my comp invisible. The other option is to tile the gradient, which does exactly what it sounds like. It just tiles that source in every direction, but we do see a seam now. So I'm gonna leave that to stretch gradient to fit, and then finally we have the ability to invert the gradient. So that'll just make black values white, white values black, and invert everything in between it. And this whole time my transition softness has been pretty high. If I turn that back down, we can get something that looks a little bit more crisp. But those are the controls of the gradient wipe effect. It can definitely come in handy, and there are a whole lot of possibilities since your gradient layer can literally be anything. But that's gradient wipe in a nutshell. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.